If you guys want to learn how to edit ideogram images, this is going to be the best video for you. All right, I'm going to show you how to edit them, how to upscale them, and how to make sure they all come out great so that you can actually put them on a t-shirt and make some money. All right, so I'm going to show you first thing is the type of prompt that I'm writing. And I noticed something quite uh, important when it comes down to prompting. Out of all the different... Uh, and, and there are a few, but the, out of all the different images that I created, the few images that I created with ideogram, what I find works pretty decent is just giving it topography, okay? And what I mean topography, what do I mean by that? Ideogram naturally is going to add different elements to the to the canvas. It's going to add different pictures. It's going to add different graphics. It's going to add different things like that, okay? In fact, you could kind of see here what's going on. There's different images that are slight, but they're simple, okay? So what I do is I don't tell the AI here to add any images. I literally just give it either style, color, and what I want it to write, okay? So for example, and this is specifically, by the way, for the people that want to have the writing in their posts. So I wrote topography. It's always sunny on Sunday. And then here I have the palette colors that I have, and I, of course, I'm using my palette tool, I have different, you know, different palettes, all right, and so I just copy and pasted some, some colors for the palette, hit generate, and this is what it created, all right, so for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and download this version right here, I'll hit download, and then we could hit generate here, and it will create more with the same color tones, all right, now with that being said, I'm going to show you how to actually edit what I just downloaded. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to upscale the image, all right? And for me personally, I don't pay for my upscales. They're completely free for me because I have a software tool that I pay for a monthly subscription. It's real cheap. I think it's like anywhere from like eight to 10 bucks a month, which is what I'm using now that can upscale it for me. Now, this image is right now 1,024 by 1,024 pixels. And you could see it is a little bit, it's not, it's not really clear all the way, right? It has some pixelation. It has some weird stuff going on. The first thing I need to do is I need to upscale it. All right, so I'm going here and I'm upscaling it by 4X. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I'll hit upscale and I'll let it do its thing. All right, so now it's upscaled to 4096 by 4096. Now, although it is upscaled, first of all, it's significantly better. You could tell the difference now. The lines are, are defined, everything. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but from my end, it looks really, really good, right? And now it's over 4,000 pixels. What I, the only, and like I said, the only reason I'm doing the upscale is that so it can clean up all the little details to the image that I don't necessarily need or want, okay? Then I'm going to go over here to develop, and I'm just going to turn smart contrast up a little bit. And what this does for me is I get to see the text or the font and all these different elements in their uh, basically their most contrasting colors. And I want that. I want it to be contrasting because when I remove that background, it's going to pop that much more. So I can also work on different colors, but I'm not going to complicate this process for you guys. I'm going to make it as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to export this. And so I'm going to export this to a name. So I'll just type in a random name here and I'll export it. Okay. And now what I'm going to do to make this as easy as possible, I'm going, and by the way, look at the new creations that I created. I actually really like them, but I'm going to go into Canva now, and I'm going to take the exact same image that has been upscaled, which is this one, and I want to show you the original compared to the uh, upscaled version. That's why I downloaded both of them, so I can kind of show you here. So this is the new version, okay, and this is the upscaled version, or excuse me, this is the original, this is the upscaled. You can see from the colors that the font or the, the, the text, right, not only is it clearer, it's more bright, it's more vibrant, and it will make better sales on a t-shirt. At the end of the day, I want something that's going to pop when a customer looks at it. And I want them to feel genuinely like they want to buy it. Now, you can see here there's a background color. I don't want the background. I want this to be able to fit on any type of product, right? So I'm going to go over here to edit image, and I'm just going to click on BG Remover. Now, most of the time, because these designs are pretty simple, the BG Remover will be able to take care of this. And 
it will hopefully remove all the different colors in the background. Now, this is kind of the part in the video where things can be iffy here because sometimes, depending on the design, it won't remove the background properly. So that just depends on the situation. In my case, it did. It did a great job. You can see here, it did a phenomenal job. There's none of those green elements again. If I make the background here black, right, guess what? The t-shirt design works. If the t-shirt is blue, it works. If the t-shirt is green, it works. All these situations, the t-shirts works. And the point is, is that I took a design that I personally wouldn't use in the beginning, right? The original format of it, just like this. And I upped the ante. I made it brighter. I made it better looking. I upscaled the design past 4,000 pixels. And it effectively cost me nothing. Okay. Now there is some people, you know, talking about, should you use ideogram? Should you not? I already broke down those videos. I came out in the first video and I thought it was perfectly fine to use it. I didn't read the terms of service. I didn't read anything and I used it. And then I got a few comments of people saying you can't use it. Then I made a video telling you guys, Hey guys, I think you can't use it. Uh, shout out to the people who wrote me in the comments. We can't use it. Right. Then I come back the third video and I fully admit that you know, the owners of the, of the software are basically saying, it's not that you can't use it. It's that if you use it, it's your responsibility to, to take on the, the responsibility behind it. Right. So if you decide to use it, great. If you decide to not use it, great, but it's all your responsibility. So you can use it if you want to. It's just, you have to be aware of how you're using it. So in my case, I find that the best way, like I said, for the prompts is the text, right? The quotes, and then maybe some sort of descriptive information. For me, in this case, I use the descriptive information to be palette colors. And these palette colors do well with the topic, right? So you could see this design. We could do the exact same thing. This is very clear. It looks good. If you guys like this, I'm just going to go ahead and do another uh, tutorial right now. So we have this image. It's always sunny on Sunday. I'll do the exact same thing. I'll hit download. I'll go over here to the upscaler. Okay. I'll go ahead and drag and drop this here. And then what I'll do is I'll go over to the upscaler and I'll upscale it in 4x uh, definition four times. Okay, clearly it's gonna look better. Let me go ahead and click on it and enlarge it. And I will go to the develop section, smart contrast, turn that up or turn it up to the degree that I want it on. So let's just say I want it here. Then what I'll do is actually I'm gonna denoise it let me go over here to the denoiser and I'm going to increase that luminosity for, for it to denoise. Okay. And then what I'm going, let me see how this looks here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it. So I'll go over here to disc, give it a name, upload it into Canva once it's done exporting. So I'll go over here, upload it into Canva, right? So drag and drop. Let's see. It's right here. Drag and drop it. And just for the you know sake of this video, I'll go ahead and create a before. This is the after. Let me show you guys the before version. And that's the before. And once again, my goal is to make it transparent. So here you guys have the before and the after. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and make it transparent. Made it transparent. Canva's doing its thing. Not always perfect, like I said, that is a reminder. Not always 100% perfect. Sometimes it will mess, miss some details, but I find that when there's less images and less things on the image, it tends to work pretty decent. Then I go ahead, I add a background, right, just to see if it looks okay, and it does. It does look okay. Uh, but when I export this, I'm going into that transparent mode, guys. I'm going to go over here and hit the transparent button, all right, when I export. So, you guys let me know what you think of this strategy. Is it a good strategy? I think it's really good. To be honest, I think it gets the job done and it gets the job done quickly. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.